I'd be lying if I didn't say that Adzerox Tai Chi series of motherboards have been some of my favorite over the recent years because of the design. Right here, we've got a brand new board called the Azrock X870E Tai Chi Lite. And the Lite means they've pulled a bunch of features off the board to make it a little bit more affordable. This is a brand new AM5 board for all of these new Ryzen 9000 processors. Let's do our usual thing. Let's take a bit of a closer look at what comes in the box of this board and what's physically on the board. And remember, ladies and gents, this video is not a review. It's just an overview because Technically, we're not allowed to review these motherboards right now. It's a confusing one. It's a very AMD thing to do. Let's take a closer look. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the brand new ASRock X870E Tai Chi Lite. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at all of the things that come with this brand new board from ASRock. In box number one is this three-way, three-pin, five-volt addressable RGB splitter cable. Because this board has a little less bling-bling, they want you to add bling-bling. Right. Next up, we've got this antenna. This is the antenna for the built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi 7. What we're going to see going forward with most of these boards is all boards will essentially just have Wi-Fi 7 now. Next up, we need to open up the flap on the right hand side so we can see these. This is a set of SATA cables or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs, all those good old spinning rust drives. Next up, we've got some thermal probes. These plug into the motherboard and essentially what these would do, these will allow you to monitor different parts of the internals of your system and adjust fan speed accordingly. We've got some documentation. Well, this is a quick installation guide and you can access this online by using the QR code. Lastly, there's a Tai Chi keycap. We've seen this with a couple Tai Chi generations and it is a nice little addition. I guess it costs nothing extra to give you a single keycap. Let's unsheath the ASRock X870E Tai Chi Lite and take a bit of a closer look at everything on the board. Spoiler alert, this board is the same as the regular Tai Chi. All right, let's take a look at the bottom of the motherboard first. Right, we've got the front panel audio header. We've got a four pin 12 volt RGB header, a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There's three headers for the thermal probes that I showed earlier. This will allow you to monitor things inside the system and adjust your fan speeds accordingly. There's two USB 2.0 headers for RGB controllers, liquid coolers, and some legacy things that you may need. There's four four pin PWM fan headers to connect your fans to. There's a USB 3.2 type A front panel header. There's a clear CMOS jumper. So if you need to clear the CMOS without pressing the back button on the back of the motherboard, you can do it there. And there's also the front panel header for all your lights and all your switches to turn on your system to let you know that it's on and to turn it on. On the right hand edge of the board, we've got six SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. We've got a USB type C front panel header, a USB 3.2 front panel header, we have the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new X870E Tai Chi Lite. There's two more three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. We've then got a reset button that is surface mounted on the board, as well as a power button in case you're benchmarking or testing the motherboard out of the system and a postcode diagnostic LED screen. On the top edge of the board, we've got three more PWM fan headers, and towards the top left edge, we've got two 8-pin EPS power connectors. Hiding on the surface of the board next to the RAM slots is another PWM fan header. This is typically used for CPU fans. Now, if we take a look at the PCIe slot configuration, this one is a little bit different to what you would expect. This has two PCIe Gen 5 slots, the top one is a full by 16 size slot. The top slot is a lot further down than a typical PCIe slot. It's in the third position from memory. And the bottom slot is a PCIe Gen 5 by 8 slot, even though it's by 16 sized, which is pretty normal for motherboards these days. The VRM layout on this board is quite interesting. It's got a pretty over-engineered VRM. It's got a 24 
plus two plus one phase digital VRM setup with 110 amp power stages. As you can see, the heatsink for the IO cover is absolutely massive. And the one at the top of the motherboard is very large as well. I mean, we've got a bit of extra space because it is an EATX board. Because this is an AM5 board, this board has the LGA1718 socket, otherwise known as AM5, with stock AM5 cooler mounting that you'd find on all the boards here. Let's pop the slot open just so you can take a bit of a look at the socket, just in case you've never seen it before. I like to do this because a lot of the time when people look at these videos, they may have been looking at a particular board that they've never seen before, or they might be new to PC building. So I can save you the effort so you can see what inside of the slot looks like. As we flip over to the back of the board, you can see that there's not a lot going on back here other than that permanently mounted bracket for the back of the socket and the IO cover mounting. For RAM support, this one is a little bit interesting as well. This board should support up to 256 gigs of memory at 8,000 mega transfers. And this is DDR5 memory and there's four slots in total, but we don't have the full specifications yet. Let's pop off the top M.2 slot. It has a toolless mechanism and the top slot here is a PCIe Gen 5 by four slot. What I found interesting was the rest of the M.2 slots on this board don't have toolless heat sinks, but the mounting solution for all of them are toolless with this little clip here. For the slot configuration though, as mentioned, the top slot is a PCIe Gen 5 by four slot and the rest of the M.2 slots on this board are PCIe Gen 4 slots, not PCIe Gen 5. I think it's a little bit surprising considering the rest of the X870 boards that we've seen have all PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots. The reason why they've probably done this is to save on price. I'm fairly certain that the full Tai Chi is the same here. Because this is EATX as well, there's another M.2 slot next to the RAM slots, which just adds an extra slot just in case you wanted one. Now, for the rear IO, this is where it gets really interesting. We've got a clear CMOS button, a BIOS flashback button. We've got the antenna connectors for the built-in Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi 7. We've got HDMI out. We've got a bunch of USB 3.2 type A ports. Some of them are 10 gig, some of them are five gig. There's also two USB 2.0 ports. The blue ones here are the 10 gig ports. But what's more interesting here is USB 4.0 Type-C is standard across the board. The way that AMD is doing this is with an Asmedia controller and it's not on the CPU itself. I just thought I'd clear that up because that's the major difference between the older chipset and the new chipset. USB 4 is now standard. However, it's not on CPU, it is on a separate controller. What's more interesting is the trend that we're going to be seeing going forward with a lot of these boards is five gigabit ethernet and the Tai Chi light also has five gigabit ethernet. There's also two 3.5 millimeter jacks. One is for speaker or headphone output, one's for microphone output, as well as a SPDIF optical connector, just in case you wanted that. enjoyed this first look and overview of the brand new ASRock X870E Tai Chi light. What I find interesting about this X870E Tai Chi light is the fact that they've removed a bunch of cosmetic things on the board to kind of drive the price down and not lose any of the features of the full-fledged Tai Chi. So a couple of those things would be for the top PCIe slot, the release mechanism has been removed from the light version. It's just back to a regular clip which means the price is lower because there's less materials to put on the board. The other thing that I found was also the fact that they removed the RGB strip from underneath the bottom M.2 slot, as well as all of the RGB on top of the IO cover. So essentially what they've done is they've removed all of the RGB and the convenience features 
to make it a cheaper version of exactly the same board. Now, if I was to pick between this one and the Tai Chi, let's say for price and basically the same performance, I would probably pick this because it's less bling bling and would be exactly the same as the full Tai Chi. As far as pricing and availability, as mentioned with some of our other new AM5 board content, these boards should all be releasing on the 30th of September. There's a sales embargo, but we're allowed to show you the boards, but we can't do any performance testing. It's a confusing AMD thing to do, but they often do this because maybe someone leaked the boards early and they're like, hey, who cares? Let's just show everyone the boards, but don't test anything yet, which, I mean, it kind of makes sense, but not really because as I've mentioned in other videos, I'm not sure why AMD didn't just hold off for the Ryzen 9000 launch for a bit longer and release the boards and the chipset at the same time. It's so confusing, but I guess they wanted to get the jump with the new CPUs, but again, just confusing. AMD has done this a couple times over the last couple generations. They did it with Ryzen 5000. They released X570S after the new CPU. So there's just like a whole weird thing that AMD is doing at the moment. I wish they were a bit more cohesive with their launch patterns and their launch cycles, but beggars can't be choosers. We get what we get and we get upset every single time. <laughs> but it is a pattern now, we've seen it form. Let us know what you think of this ASRock X870E Tai Chi Lite. It's looking fairly interesting and kind of one of the, let's call it a affordable X870E e-board. But yeah, I don't know what the deal is with the pricing and all that jazz. And it is nice to have ASRock boards back on the channel because we hadn't heard from ASRock in a couple of years.